In this video, we explain the read-only memory. We consider the internal. The ROM is a device in which we store information permanently, so it is meant to, to be to be there forever. The binary information that we store is specified by the designer, and it is embedded in the unit to form the required interconnection pattern. The information stays within the unit even when the power is turned off. We give an example here for a ROM that has K inputs and N outputs. The outputs give the data bits of the stored word in the memory that is selected by the address. So the K bits input, this is the address line and the word at this address will be read. The outputs will be the end bits of this word. The number of words in a ROM, if we assume it is equal to 2 to the, to the power k, this means we need k input lines or k address lines. And this is a block diagram of the ROM that has k inputs, which are addresses, and n output, which is the data, and the ROM itself will be 2 to the power k words by n bits per word. The ROM does not have data inputs because we don't store data. It, we only read data. In other words, we don't have a write operation. We only have read operation to the ROM. We give an example of a very small ROM that consists of 32 words and 8 bits per word. So this ROM 32 by 8, we call it. it. We need five input lines or address lines and eight output lines or data lines. The five input lines form the binary numbers from 0 to 31 for the address, and the five inputs will be decoded into a decoder, which will produce 32 distinct, distinct outputs and each output of the decoder represents a memory address of the word that we need to read from. This is an example showing the internal logic of this 32 by 8 ROM. So the five inputs, we can call them I0, I1, I2, I3, and I4, where I4 will be the most significant, I0 the least significant, and these will go through a decoder which is 5 by 32. The decoder will have 32 outputs, output 0 when the inputs are all zeros, and output 1 will be enabled when the inputs represent the decimal 1, so this is 1 and the others are 0, or 2, 3, until 31. And this ROM, which is 5 by 32, sorry, this ROM, which is 32 by 8, as we said, it has five inputs here, and it has eight outputs, which we call A7, A6, A5, etc., etc., until A0. And the construction, as we can see here, each OR gate will have 32 inputs coming from the 32 outputs of the decoder. Or we can see it the other way around, each output of the decoder will be input to the eight OR gates. We can formalize those. We said that the 32 outputs of the decoder are connected to each of the eight OR gates, or vice versa. Each OR gate must be considered as having 32 inputs. And there are eight OR gates total, and each OR gate has 32 input connections. Therefore, the ROM contains 32 multiplied by 8, which is 256 internal connections. 32 words multiply by 8 bits per word. It is 256 interconnections. In general, if a ROM has 2 to the k words and n bits per word, it will have an internal k multiply by 2 to the k decoder and n OR gates, and each OR gate will have 2 to the k inputs which are connected to each of the outputs of the decoder. Let us take, 
let us look at the internal logic of this room that we have just described, which is 32 by 8. The 256 interconnections in the room are programmable. So each cross point, each point is a programmable. Programmable connection between two lines is logically equivalent to a switch. So as if we have a switch at every intersection that we have seen in the previous slide. And this intersection will be either closed, which means two lines are connected, or the switch will be open, which means the two lines are disconnected. A programmable intersection, sometimes we call it a cross, a cross point. So a cross point, it is like this. This is the cross point. And various physical devices are used to implement the cross point switches. So here we have a switch cross point. One of the most simple technologies employs a fuse that normally connects the two points. So usually these points are connected by a fuse and we open this, the fuse is opened, the switch is opened or blown, we call it, by the application of high voltage pulse into the fuse. So when we bring them, when we manufacture the ROM first, they will always be closed and where we want to store zero, this will be open. So we blow up the fuse. Internal binary storage of the ROM is usually specified by a truth table that shows the word content in each address, as we see now. So the content, the content of this ROM, 32 by 8, is specified by a truth table. And the truth table shows the five inputs under which are listed all 32 addresses. Therefore, we find the inputs here in the truth table, which are I4, I3, I2, I1, I0, and they take the values from 0, 0, 0, 0, 5 zeros all the way until 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, which is decimal 0, decimal 1, decimal 2, 3, and decimal 31 here, and 30 here, and 29, and 28 backwards. And in this address 0, we have the following is stored, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0 in word number 0, and so on in at word number 1, word number 2, word number 3, all the way until word number 31. And these will be the outputs that we obtain from the ROM that we have just seen. When we talked about the inter, uh, the cross point actually, each of these data bits, so look here we have 32 words, so 32 of these, and each bit has eight, uh, each word has eight bits. So we have 32 by eight interconnections, and each one will have either zero or one stored in it. When the one, when we want to store one, the interconnection, the point is connected, and when we want to store zero, the point is not connected, and this is what we have just mentioned. 